It's Friday, February 21. This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. Sections of the island have already begun to experience drought conditions. The government has set aside $100 million to truck water to the affected areas. Local government and community development minister Desmond McKenzie spoke of the allocation. Already the country is experiencing drought conditions. The parishes of Portland and St. Mary is presently going through that phase. The government has been proactive. We have started to look at how we are going to respond to the crisis. And we have been doing so in a number of ways. The minister made the remarks at a recent groundbreaking ceremony for the building of a water shop in Trial St. Elizabeth. Among the features of the water shop project will be the installation of a 30,000 gallon water tank to service the surrounding communities. Minister with Responsibility for the Education Portfolio, Carl Samuda, says harsh measures are coming to deal with frequent acts of violence in the nation's schools. He has not given any details of the type of stringent measures that would be introduced. However, at a recent press conference, Mr. Samuda outlined measures that the ministry will be pursuing to secure schools. Five billion dollars, I might add. If we were to do all that we have identified to satisfy the security needs of, across the country, and we have done that survey, it would require $5 billion of additional expenditure um, to have adequate fencing around every school that needs it. Remembering that in many instances, our primary schools particularly never had, some of them, any fences. They were open. Those were the good old days when nobody would assault a school or cause any disruption to take place in a school compound. However, he said that before any decisions on harsher measures were made, he would first meet with the ministry officials to properly brief cabinet on the incidence of violence in schools. President of the National Association of Deans of Discipline, Samuel Smalling, is worried about the frequency of violent attacks at schools. Mr. Smalling said he has written to the Permanent Secretary in the Education Ministry, requesting an urgent meeting to discuss strategies to improve safety and security in schools. This follows two more incidents since Wednesday. The Dean of Discipline at Arakabesa High School in St. Mary was injured uh, Wednesday during an altercation with a grade 12 student. Classes were suspended. On Thursday morning, the police were called to Gregory Park Primary School in Portmore, St. Catherine, after a parent threatened to harm a teacher. There is a significant increase in credit extended by deposit-taking institutions to businesses and households for the 12-month period ending December 2019. Governor of the Bank of Jamaica, Richard Biles, says credit to businesses grew by 20.3%, while the provision to households increased by 16.5%. Biles says the buoyant growth in credit represents stronger signs that the central bank's accommodative monetary policy stance has been bearing fruit. Accommodative monetary policy is where a central bank attempts to expand the overall money supply to boost the economy. The bank has maintained the policy interest rate on overnight placements from deposit-taking institutions at 0.50% as at yesterday, having incrementally increased the figure from 3.2% at the start of 2019. The governor was addressing the quarterly media briefing at the Bank of Jamaica's downtown Kingston headquarters this week. St. James residents and those in surrounding parishes are invited to attend the expungement fair being hosted by the Legal Aid Council, LAC, on Friday. The event is being held on Alice Eldemeyer Drive between the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information's regional office and the Herbert Morrison Technical High School in Freeport. Under the Criminal Justice Rehabilitation of Offenders Act, Jamaicans convicted of certain criminal offenses can apply for their record to be cleaned after a predetermined rehabilitative period has passed.
People contacting the current Commissioner General's Office, which includes a Tax Administration of Jamaica, TAJ, executives and communications branch, may experience intermittent temporary delays. This as the TAJ is moving its corporate office to the Donald Sangster Building, also known as the Round Building, on 116 East Street, Kingston. The authority says that customers wishing to contact sections of the current corporate office, including their communications branch, are being advised to contact employees via their TAJ assigned mobile numbers. Customers may also call 876-922-3470-9 to contact any of the relocated units. The office will formally open effective Monday, February 24. The private sector organization of Jamaica, PSOJ, has announced the resignation of Makabe Bennett Easy from her current position as a chief executive officer. She will demit office effective March 25, 2020. PSOJ President Keith Duncan was quoted as saying in a statement, the organization supports her decision to pursue other professional opportunities. The outgoing CEO expressed satisfaction with her tenure and reiterated a commitment to support her successor to ensure a smooth transition. Bennett Easy assumed the role of CEO back in October 2018. Former Chief Justice of Jamaica, Zelia Makala, has been appointed as a selected commissioner to the Electoral Commission of Jamaica, the country's election oversight body. Her appointment comes after the December 31, 2019 resignation of Dorothy Pine McClarty as ECG chairman after six years in the post. Today, Friday, February 21, is being observed as Jamaica Day. The annual event is part of efforts by the Ministry of Education to foster national pride in students. It celebrates the many makers and markers that uniquely are Jamaican and the country's contribution to the world. Jamaica Day 2020 is being celebrated under the theme Celebrating Jamaica highlighting our icons in the arts, agriculture, and technological innovations. The St. Richard's Primary School celebrated Jamaica Day in its own unique way. Different grades will come up and perform in the different arts. And we are going to have our special guest artists as well doing their thing. So today we're going to have a good day, good day. a very good day. <laughs> reopening of Fort Charles will take place on Monday, February 24, 2020. Built in the late 1650s, Fort Charles is the first fort to be erected in Port Royal. Originally called Fort Cromwell, the fort, the only one of the town's forts to survive the 1692 earthquake. Originally washed away by sea on three sides, the fort is now firmly landlocked due to the gradual silt buildup. The fort is one of the major attractions for cruise ship visitors who will arrive on the Morella Discovery 2 cruise ship on Monday. The introduction of a cruise shipping to Port Royal and by extension Kingston represents an achievement of an objective which was first contemplated over 25 years ago. Port Royal joins Montego Bay, Falmouth, Ocho Rios and Port Antonio, and it is anticipated that the new complement of five cruise ports of call will further strengthen Jamaica's cruise shipping product and enhance the Cruise Jamaica brand.
Alicia Steele now takes us through our entertainment recap. What's up? I'm Alicia and welcome to PBCJ's Entertainment Recap. Bob 75th. February 6th was the 75th birthday of the late reggae icon Bob Marley. Our team visited the annual celebration at the Marley Museum on Hope Road. We have all the highlights you need. Take a look. integrity, sustain our heritage intelligence, and maintain our traditional protocols. City long live, spirit of Bob Marley long live. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right, all right. So now, St. Isaac Basic School, it is your time. Children, come up, you're gonna sing. Jaguar showroom opening, vroom vroom. The Jaguar Land Rover showroom is now open. The US 13 million full service dealership sits pretty at 3 Auto Wind Drive. What can I say? The treatment was pure luxury from start to finish. Guests were shuttled to the venue in high style, from the glitzy decor and the party favors to the high-end toys on display. It was a car lover's dream come through. The Honorable Brogod Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, was keynote speaker. The Stuart Automotive Group is the force behind it all. And the Stuart clan were out in strong numbers, even paying tribute to patriot Gordon Boot Stuart. But the real showstopper was the performance of artist protege. His revetting set had the audience eating out of his hands. However, some eyebrows were raised when he performed Blood Money one of his more controversial hits in his catalog. To this uh, protege shrug, you know what you were paying for, he said. All in all, the event was a good one. Jamaica Reggae Music Industry Association, J-A-R-I-A, -A, Reggae Wednesday. As a part of the ongoing Reggae Month celebrations, the Reggae Wednesday show recently invaded Emancipation Park in the heart of New Kingston. The audience rocked to performances by Munga Honorable, Chi Ching Ching, Jamil, Big Youth, Florgon, Zaga, Dancehall Pasta, Earth Cry, Luciana Rasai, Toots and Metals, Christopher Martin, among others. The past themes for Reggae Wednesday was Dancehall Castle, and this Wednesday pass was Reggae Got Soul. Here are the highlights. Everybody, I'm teaching off the rope tonight. When you wrap up the rope, I'm teaching off the rope right now. Yeah, big up, big up. And them can pretend for so long, but no more. Hey, what you know? I'm if every day you might beat you, and I'll treat you one day, your life in a problem. Girl, don't yeah. Living in survival system. Oh, Let us pray. He's a perfect wonder. Whatever does it. DYCR wins court case against Downsound Record. Dub poet DYCR has won his long-standing legal feud with Downsound Record label owner Joseph Bogdanovich. DYCR had sued Downsound for a contractual breach. He said he signed a contract on August 12, 2014 with the record label to do an album. But according to DYCR, Down Sound Record put up no money or resources to get this done. The court awarded the dub poet with more than $1 million. Kudos to you, DYCR. 
Friday or Friday. This week's Friday goes to Ding Dong with Watch Them. Out and about. Jamaica Rum Festival starts on Saturday, February 29 and floats over to March the 1st. From 7 a.m. Jamaica Rum Festival 2020 is held at Hope Royal Botanical Gardens in Kingston. Then we have the UK Jamaica Fair 2020 and the theme for this year's UK Jamaica Fair 2020 is Creativity is Great. It is held on Saturday, February 29 from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the King's House. And you know the regular Fridays you have MVP Fridays. Thanks for watching PBCJ's Entertainment Recap. Remember, I'm your girl Alicia. Talk to you next time. Oh, what well, good? The US dollar is being traded at $140.53, down by 52 cents. That's according to the Bank of Jamaica's daily exchange trading summary. The Canadian dollar is being traded at $105.98, down from $106.17, while the British pound sterling is being traded at $182.01, up from $181.53. In regional news, one of the long-standing questions that came up at the 31st Intercessional CARICOM meeting in Barbados was the free movement of workers among member states. Dominica Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt addressed the issue at a press conference on Wednesday. Extensive work was mm -hmm. done um, on the free movement of, of, of labor throughout the Caribbean community. And in this document, we had suggested that we have the we have everybody captured every category captured in this as you know we've started on a phase basis with university graduates etc and, and we're coming down the ladder and it was always felt that we must not let the Caribbean citizens believe that it, is, it would be only a selected few who would enjoy this fundamental right of movement. And, and so there was not only a recommendation for all categories to be considered, but this also spoke about a procedure in managing this movement. Prime Minister Skerritt also dealt with the issue of contingent rights. Contingent rights are those which are associated with CARICOM skilled nationals as they and their dependents travel hassle-free throughout the region. These rights relate to their non-discriminatory access to the social services of the host territory. The issue of contingent rights was always a contentious issue. And uh, what we have decided at this meeting uh, especially considering the intervention by the private sector and the labor movement uh, to bring this document back to the table. And that document um, came about from a wide cross-section of consultations with the private sector, civil society, the trade unions, uh, member states. And, and so we will bring it back to, to heads we intend to re-engage the stakeholders so we can freshen up the document if we have to. And it will be presented uh, to heads at the meeting in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In Guyana, the Bonasica bauxite project was officially opened along the Demerara River on Thursday. U.S. bauxite company First Bauxite and its subsidiary Guyana International Minerals have invested over 100 million U.S. dollars in the development of the area to mine bauxite. The bauxite found in that area is one of the highest quality in the world, and the mines have a lifeline of 15 years. Newsroom Guyana's Encinella Patwa reports. The government of Guyana has no shares in the recent U.S.-based bauxite company, which began operations on January 1st this year along the Demerara River in Bonasica. At the official opening ceremony for the bauxite mine that has the highest quality in bauxite in the world, Chief Executive Officer for the company, Bill Rice, said while the government has no shares, the company is committed to paying royalties and taxes. An estimated U.S. $50 million will be paid to the government in taxes over a 15-year period. Mr. Rice said the company has invested some U.S. $100 million in the exploration and development of the mine. The company has been drilling for over 10 years now.
government does not have any equity in uh, gin mid or first bog site. However, as part of our minerals agreement, we do pay royalties as well as all taxes and fees that are required. And uh, we see that as a very good partnership that we've got with the government. And our goal is as we continue to grow our business and grow the value of what we sell, we're happy to pay as much royalty as possible. The approximate 13 million tons of bauxite found in the Bonasica project is one of the highest qualities in the world. Products made from the bauxite last longer. It has low contaminants and high in aluminum. This type of bauxite is also found in the quarantine area in Guyana. It was noted that they are encouraging signals from markets in Asia, North America and Europe for the quality of the bauxite at Bonasica. Mr. Rice said the company is committed to ensuring that Guyana receive the most value possible and also support the country and help the economy grow. He said they are also committed to safety and environmental compliance with both local and international standards. One of the ways that we want to show the respect we have is to make certain that we're giving all the people that work for us opportunities to grow and develop to their full potential. And we think that that's one of the areas that we can help both them, we can help the country, but we can help ourselves by allowing people to be able to learn, be able to take on new skills, take on new responsibilities, and continue to grow. And last but not least, one of the things we want to do is make certain that we're supporting Guyana to meet your goals and objectives. Minister of Natural Resources Rafael Trotman said the bauxite industry has helped in the development of the country. The minister said they welcome investors who are committed to developing a qualified workforce. We will continue to expect high standards from you in your dealings with the people of Ghana in order that we may have a long and mutually beneficial relationship. We also expect that as you benefit from the resources in the community, you comply with our laws and respect our people. Leave behind better infrastructure than you met and also a more professional workforce than you found. And of course, we expect you to maintain your high stand standards of environmental behavior which can be used as a model beyond Bonasica. To get to the mines, the main mode of transport is through the Demerara River by boat to a small community, Sand Hills, and from there it's a 30-minute drive. Workers spend two weeks in living quarters in Sand Hills, and then they are off for one week. Currently, there are 95 permanent workers, 130 contracted employees, and eight expatriates. There are two medical centers on site to treat medical personnel. As it relates to production, the bauxite plant can produce 1,000 tons a day and about 30,000 per month. A pilot-scale production was done in 2019 to start developing the market for the bauxite and so far have supplied over 20,000 tons of bauxite. The target for the year is 320,000 tons. Reporting for Newsroom, Esanela Patwo. Grand Cayman was rocked by an earthquake with a magnitude 4.4 late Wednesday. The U.S. Geological Survey said the earthquake occurred at a depth of 6.2 miles and was located 30 miles south of Bowdoin Town. However, there were no reports of damage or injuries from the quake that was felt just after 6 p.m. We are in the creases with cricket now as the career of Guyana and West Indies under-19 batsman Kevlon Anderson has received a major boost with the signing of a contract with global sports brand Adidas. The deal was secured by an overseas-based Guyanese who has been very supportive of local cricketers. We get more in this Newsroom Guyana report. The deal was secured by USA-based Guyanese businessman and sport fanatic Ravi Atwaru, the proprietor of Cricket Zone USA, North America's largest cricket retail outlet. Through the alliance, the right-handed Anderson, who represented West Indies at a recently concluded Youth World Cup in South Africa, will use branded Adidas gear. The Rose Hall Tongue Youth and Sports Cup player is one of the brightest young talents in Guyana and one that is heavily tipped to have a long career in the game. Anderson, who made 86 not out against England at the Youth World Cup, expressed appreciation to Etwaru and Adidas for choosing him as a brand ambassador. I'm just like to say thanks to Ravi at Cricket Zone, you know, I'm getting Adidas on board. It just it's up to me now to just go out and do the good. I never had it hard before, but just thankful. So anybody else around the world could just go out and support Ravi so he could make other dreams to young kids come true. Well, I say it's a dream come true, just like thank the Almighty without him, nothing is possible. Etwaru said apart from supplying cricketers with quality gear, 
Cricket Zone USA is also very keen on helping young cricketers achieve their dreams, and this latest arrangement with Anderson is another demonstration in that regard. Anderson is the third Guyanese cricketer to benefit from an Adidas contract after West Indies players Chandapal Hemraj and Romario Shepherd. Reporting for Newsroom, I'm Avinash Ramsan. And that's the news on TBCJ. Pleasant viewing.